to say hi because I haven't been here in a while. What happened was uh, my team was in the Super Bowl. <laughs> my team. And so I went down to Miami and, you know, things got a little frisky. <laughs> hey, Conchita. And then I said I'd give her a shout out on the show. So anyway, <laughs> So, uh, I, you know, things got a little frisky in Miami, and uh, the game was going on, and I think we won, but I can't recall. <laughs> Anyways, here's the problem. I just made it back from Miami, and tomorrow is Fat Tuesday. Well, do not clap. Do not clap. Do not clap at me, sir. <laughs> For in my circles, a clap is a declaration of a duel between two gentlemen. I don't know if that's true, but I just made it up. You see, because I cannot clap without giving the Scottish Conan guy arthritis. You see what I'm saying? Now, here's the thing. I, I got to go to New Orleans. New Orleans. I call it New Orleans. I don't know why. I blame it on my accent, which is indiscriminate, and my speech impediment, which seems to pop up from time to time. I want you to know one thing, though. You can follow me on the Tweety. But not on the Tweety that says Wavy Rancheros, for even although that is my name, that is not my Tweety account. That seems to be an imposter. Follow me on Craigie Ferg. Cause I ate him. I didn't eat him. I might have done, I can't recall. Yeah. It's going south pretty quickly, this whole thing. Isn't it? But that's good though, you know? I mean, cause if this part really sucks, the rest of the show might look a little better for a change. Show with Craig Ferguson on CBS and get full episodes whenever you want right in your phone. Vcast video on demand from the network with the most 3G coverage, Verizon. Take the wee things. What I don't want. Take the wee things in your pants and sit them down on a chair. <laughs> I I'm dirty even when I don't want to be. It's kind of 
like I'm sort of not. <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it is. It is a great day. Because, of course, of course, it's President's Day. It's President's Day. Happy President's Day, everybody. The President's Day, we uh, celebrate America's presidential history by enjoying a great deal on mattresses. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think it was uh, President Kennedy who said, Ask not what you can do for your country. Ask what you can do to get quality goods at discount prices. <laughs> that wasn't very good uh, impersonation of JFK. It was kind of like, if JFK had been a robot, that would have been. <laughs> Ask not what you can do for your <laughs> <laughs> Do you know there's a congressional candidate in Missouri is, and he's saying that allowing gays in the military could strengthen Al-Qaeda. And I'm like, and how exactly would that work? How does that work? Well, they dance better than me and they know how to accessorize. I'm very, very angry. It's time for jihad. Also, scientists today are saying that being bored can actually be bad for your health. You should probably change the channel. <laughs> anyway, it's not only a great day for America, it's a great day for Canada. Up in Vancouver, the Winter Olympics are in full swing. Canada won their first gold medal for the men's freestyle mogul skiing. It's the first time they've won a gold in their own country. So congratulations, Canada. Well done. Well done, Canucks. Our northern neighbours. I was in Canada a few weeks ago, and not everyone up there is happy about the Winter Olympics. Because putting on the, the games is expensive. It's costing the Canadians like a, a billion dollars. Well, a billion Canadian dollars. <laughs> it's like 40 bucks or something. No, I'm, not. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Well done, Canada. Congratulations. I love Canada. I like it. The time I spent in Canada was great. The people there are delightful, and they're friendly. It's probably because this show doesn't go out in Canada. <laughs> Actually, it does. It does go out in Canada. That's how polite and friendly they are. They knew who I was, and they were still polite. <laughs> oh, look, it's that late-night douche, eh? <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going to say something controversial here. I, I, I have mixed feelings about the Winter Olympics. <laughs> I'm feeling very alone all of a sudden. Watching sports, but some of the events that I'm watching in the Winter Olympics is a little too much in the way of posing. The athletes are like runway models that are like, ah, ah, ah. I think they, they can't decide whether to spend their time training or picking out their outfit. I mean, look at this guy. Look, come on. I mean, I know he looks fabulous, but come on. I know he trained for years at a shot at Olympic glory, but I have. I a hard time taking an athlete seriously when he's dressed like Lady Gaga. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. It's just me. It's not him. Do you know what I can't understand as well? How the skiers can stay warm wearing these spandex cat suits. <laughs> are they freezing? These things are paper thin. To go skiing, they wear what I wear to go jazzercising. <laughs> <laughs> In my defense, though, I do dance the same way as I ski. I, uh, I keep a firm grip on my pole and I move, move with my hips. I'm also, I, I must be honest, I'm a little bit skeptical about some of the events because the judging seems a little bit arbitrary. It feels like the judge, the judges just, the judgems? Yeah, the judgems. <laughs> I call them the judgems. <laughs> <laughs> but it feels like the judges just randomly pick a score. Sometimes I watch the judges and the results, and I'm like, oh, come on, are you high? <laughs> of course, you can't judge anything if you're high unless you're Paula Abdul. And then... <laughs> So anyway, last night I'm watching the pairs figure skating. Do not judge me, bitches. Do not. I 
disagreed with the judges' decisions. I, I, the, I think the last place team actually deserved to win. They were awesome. They weren't as graceful as the winners, but they made up with it. And Panache, we got a clip. Have a look at it. <laughs> I don't care who you are. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I've spent the last six minutes, 53 seconds, trying to figure out how to put that clip onto the television. <laughs> and see, I just, I think it looks lovely, those little, you know what that reminds me of, these little chimps doing that? It reminds me of coming home from pubs in Scotland during the winter. <laughs> Do you know that the Olympics have a motto? This is true. Their, their motto is faster, higher, stronger. Unless Michael F Phelps is competing. <laughs> Michael F F Phelps? Michael F F F Phelps? Yeah. Because if he's competing, then the motor's just higher, I guess. The, the... <laughs> Michael Phelps isn't in the Winter Olympics. He couldn't, you couldn't get Michael Phelps in the Winter Olympics. He would dive into the, uh, and it would be frozen. He wouldn't be able to get in. Be like, oh, hey. dude, the water's hard. Something's wrong. Anyway, by the way, I just saw as we're all steer clear, steer clear, <laughs> just so as we're clear, I am still with Michael Phelps on the whole, I don't agree with what happened to him, that kid. He goes and wins eight gold medals, and then he goes to a party and smokes a bong, and everybody's like all angry at him, I'm like, he won eight gold medals. <laughs> He's allowed to take the evening off. <laughs> Oh, he's a disgrace. All right, I don't know. I look forward to your letters. And... <laughs> anyway, look, if we don't agree on that, there's one thing we can all agree on. And I think that's that in the Winter Olympics, the worst sport ever is curling. <laughs> Come on, it's like bowling, but with stones on ice. And a, and a guy sweeps in front of the stones so it doesn't... I don't know, it doesn't get dusty or something. <laughs> There's nothing worse than dusty stones. <laughs> That's true, actually. There is nothing worse than dusty stones. I, I found that out the hard way during a sandstorm in Albuquerque. I... <laughs> we have to take a break now. Everyone's a bit upset with me. <laughs> Particularly me, I've got some kind of stuttery thing going on tonight. I'm kind of... <laughs> But my motto is always professional, always professional. <laughs> That's my motto that I just made up. Um, I think it's good. Do not clap. Because I'm, I'm trying to figure a way of getting to the commercial break in the most awkward manner possible. Spanish word of the day. Today's word is lentejuelas. Lentejuelas. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the big Winter Olympics extravaganza we're having tonight here at the show, where we celebrate all things Canadian by being polite and a little bit reserved. <laughs> Hi, how you doing, eh? <laughs> <clears throat> All right, um, look, I can't be mucking around tonight. I've got to get through the tweeties and the emails. This is just a whole mess of stuff to get through, so I won't be mucking around wasting any time. I'll be getting straight on with business. The show won't be going over tonight. Everything will be going smoothly. I, for example, won't be just chatting away about nothing at any point during the show. <laughs> no, sorry. There's no way I'm going to screw things up tonight. No way, Mikey. I'm going to get the show done properly. <laughs> right on time. Just like the way you always like it. I'm going to keep going without interrupting the carefully planned and laid out piece of crap we have for you this evening. Yeah. 
this suit look a bit big on me? It feels a little boxy. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have time to talk about my boxy suit. <laughs> um, all right, well, I'll do the, uh, the uh, yeah, play the jingle and we'll get on with it then. Twitter, Twitter, tweeting, tweeting, ephemeral, ephemeral, fleeting, fleeting, blue and web, face coat, twist zone, ass mode, jigs and tweets, 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 and also emails. Und Just in case you are not up on uh, the way technology works, what happens is emails are white paper, Twitters are in yellow paper. I don't know why, that's just the way Bill Gates wanted it. All right, this is a Twitter from Megan Hollister, who says, uh, Craig, I am 16 and I was thinking about getting a tattoo on my wrist. Do you think a wrist tattoo would be a good first tattoo? See that? See that there? That's on my wrist, that tattoo right there. You see it? Now, we've only been working here five years. How could you possibly find my wrist? Come on. There you are. What about there? What if I do it there? Over there. See? The thing next to my head. Zoom in on it. That's my wrist. Right, now, the thing is about getting a tattoo, that, this goes all the way up, round, and right onto my peepee. -pee, but the... Uh, it doesn't. But th this, this is not a good place. The wrist is not a good place to get your first tattoo because it... Especially the, this very close down near, because it's very, very painful. You know it's going to be painful when all the big guys in the tattoo parlor come around and they go, all right, <laughs> to watch you getting your tattoo. Then you know it's going to be bad. But you are 16 and you're a girl, so I'm thinking maybe now's not the time. <laughs> Don't you have to be 18 to get a tattoo anyway? I think you have to be 18 to get a tattoo, so you're going to have to wait two years. Uh, to get a tattoo. And then when you do, I suggest tramp stamp first. And then... Because it doesn't hurt back there. It doesn't hurt. That's where I get my first one. <laughs> um, now this is from, uh, I can't pronounce it, but I uh, was saying, just wondering, do you think your poorly compensated interns consider you aloof? This is from one of the interns, isn't it? All right, Gecker Nixtel. <laughs> we'll find you. And when we find you, you're going back to college. <laughs> Community college, where you came from. Where do the interns come from? All over, really, don't they? All over the, these United States. If you want to be an intern on the show, why? <laughs> Get in touch with Mikey on the Twitter. What's your Twitter name, Mikey? Michael Nadas. Michael Nadas? Oh, Michael Nadis on the Twitter. There you are. <laughs> Take that, you bastard. <laughs> All right, well, look at the emails. This is from Jill in Concord, North Carolina. Jill says, Dear Craig, do you like caviar? I'm thinking of trying it, and I'm wondering if it's worth the expense. No, I do not like caviar. I don't like caviar at all. It's salty, 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 and fishy, fishy, fishy. I don't like it. Salty and fishy combo doesn't work for me most of the time. <laughs> People really need to grow up, honestly. <laughs> this is from Andrea in Phoenixville, uh, somewhere. Uh, it says, Dear Craig, while unemployed, I dyed my hair purple. My husband says no one will hire me with purple hair. Do you think this is true? No, I do not. I think that if you wanted a job on Sesame Street, it would be an advantage. Actually, if you wanted to intern here, you'd fit right in with purple hair. Do they have purple hair, any of the interns? Not this time. No, this time they don't. Yeah, there was one with purple hair, I remember. I don't remember, I, I didn't talk to her much because I'm very aloof with the interns. <laughs> Listen, let me just be candid with you. When you do the job that I do, you're probably best staying away from that kind of thing. <laughs> 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 we can cut that out. Uh, this is from Peter in Kansas City. Peter says, uh, Craig, what is marshmallow in Spanish? 
don't know. I've got my Google. Google it. <laughs> this is Chris in Guelph in Ontario, which is in Canada. Uh, Craig says, why? Craig doesn't say this. Chris says, says, Craig, why isn't it normal to wear turtlenecks to bars anymore? <laughs> is that a veiled sexual reference? Is that? I think, I, I don't know why. I, maybe because it's not 1974. I don't know. I, I always wear a turtleneck when I go to the bar. But then again, I'm European. I think you know what I'm saying. Yes! Just never had it done. Wasn't popular in Europe back then. That's why I never got into porn. Well, when I say I never get into porn, I meant never appearing in porn. <laughs> I know we're out of time, but don't care. Uh, this is from Hunter in Athens, Georgia. That's where REM are from. <laughs> You're welcome. Actually, people in their 40s. <laughs> Hunter says, Dear Craig, I am interested in this girl, and she has told me time and time again she is also interested in me, but she has a boyfriend. If you were in my shoes, how would you scare him away? <laughs> scare him away? <laughs> You'd scare him away like, like in Scooby-Doo when you pretend there's a ghost at the theme park or something? Well, what they would do in Scooby-Doo is you would set up a projector and then when he comes by, it would look like there was a ghost and some area was haunted and then he would go away and then... I think scaring them away is the problem. I think dealing with this tramp that's playing the both of you is that that's, that's the problem. I don't know. Where's Jerry Springer when you need him? All right, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. Everybody, look, does this, I know you probably can't see because of the lighting, but is this suit a bit boxy? I feel a bit boxy. I think it should be a double breast. I should start wearing double-breasted suits. Double-breasted suits and turtlenecks. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, everyone. I like this. I'm going to walk around like this from now on. I can't do it. I can't keep it going. My first guest tonight is an Academy Award nominee. Really? <laughs> I'm clearly slumming it here, then. He get his Academy Award nomination for A Single Man, which is in theatres now. Please welcome the adorable Colin Firth, everybody. Colin. Done to you, they very much enjoy it. That suit doesn't look boxy no, in you at all. No, no. That looks fantastic. It's not boxy. It does, it's not? No, it's Maybe it's me it, that's boxy. What's it? Is it it's a rhombus shape? A kind of rectang <laughs> uh, rectangular yes, box, a isn't it? Trapezium. You know what? An overly, I think an overly streamlined Scotsman would be very dubious. Yeah, no I'd, one, I'd be suspicious no one wants to see a streamlined Scotsman. Not that, really, that, no. that way madness lies. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get drunk that fast. No. How are you? Congratulations on, on getting nominated for an Academy Award. That's like an Oscar, isn't it? <laughs> that's what they say. It's in the same category. Yeah, that's no. what they say. If you win the Academy Award, you can go the next on step to, yeah. is the Oscar. You might go on to get an Oscar nomination. <laughs> How long have you been here? Oh, <laughs> months. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> did you get a Golden Globe for this? No. Well, what are these? I can have a... No, anyway, no, though. Man. I mean... Really. <laughs> No, I um, I sit there and I applaud Jeff Bridges for England. That's what I. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. what I. What I. Did, did he get the Golden Globe? Yes. He well, did. he's pretty good though. Is he? <laughs> 
Yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty good. I mean, he's actually <coughs> no. He's he's actually bloody marvelous. I, yeah. I, I had the the, the the bizarre sort of coincidental honor of running into. We we're on the same flight coming over here. Really? And, and is he nominated for an Oscar too? Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, that uh, must have you been... know, I had to oh. go up to him and I told him I would have voted for him had I not been throwing darts at his image. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, actually, we had a moment on the plane, which you sort of, you know, you're always flown first class with this sort of thing. And, um, I wouldn't know. No, no. no. <laughs> and men in first class, have, they, have, they give you these little sponge baggy things. You like, know, with... Oh, I was thinking SpongeBob. SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you, if you want, you can moisturise and put lip salve and there's a, you know... I'm going! You should do it. <laughs> and there's a little spray, it's called an atomizer, which I, I'm always afraid to press in case it puts us yeah. into nuclear winter. Or yeah. Some, you know, so Dr. Evil has it. Um, <laughs> but I noticed guys putting lip salve and, and I just looked around and I prayed that Jeff Bridges would moisturise. <laughs> Because I just thought, if he moisturises, I'm telling everybody. <laughs> and I think, think I could harm his award season. <laughs> <laughs> moisturising's not going to hurt you if you're a dude in L.A. You know, I mean, moisturising's kind of, that's, that's the guy Dudes thing in L.A. in L.A. don't moisturise. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> do they? Yes. I moisturise. I mean, you I do within you an really? inch of my life, yeah. I mean, I was sitting there looking round to see if people... <laughs> and what were, people were glaring at you? Uh, no, because they were moisturising as well. It sounds, it sounds like some kind of bacchanalian orgy in first class. Everyone rubbing up against each other, moisturising. <laughs> it might just be British Airways. It I might be, know. yeah. No, Listen, uh, the, the movie th uh, that you're in, the single man movie, it's directed by Tom Ford. It is. He's very fashionable, isn't he? He's a fashion guy. Yes. Yeah, is yeah. it a very fashionable film? Um, I hoped it would be. I mean, my only motive for taking it would be that it would Free be... Free clothes. I'd look good, yeah. that I'd get a, a couple of suits out of it, and he'd light me and flatter my jawline probably for the last time in my life. Oh, no, calm now. Uh, calm, you've got a fabulous jaw. Oh, bless you. Flinty, I'd say. <laughs> only a Scotsman would say flinty. No. <laughs> Um, no, so I, that's what I did, and then I had showed up, and I had to do a load of acting, um, oh. which, which did, did surprise me. It's outrageous. It was. Yeah, I got it. Not what it said on the tin. No, did, he get, did, it, did everyone wear Tom Ford clothes in the film? No, we, well, I mean, he was there, and he was, had, obviously he had a hand in it, but he did have a wonderful designer called Ariane Phillips, who, right. you know, who dresses has, you all up. Who did all that, and she's credited with it, and she, it was her work, really. I'd like to be in a film directed by Tommy Bahama. <laughs> I think that's that. I think would be great. You'd get big shirts, and you, it doesn't matter if you get fat or anything. <laughs> Don't rule him out. I'm not no, ruling no, him out. No. The thing about the Tommy Bahamas is as well that you can get as fat as you like, apparently, and you still look great in Tommy Bahama stuff. That's what guys that are wearing Tommy Bahama think. I'm sure all, of, all yeah. of that is probably true, but I don't know who Tommy, Tommy Bahama is. Uh, is Tommy, Tommy Bahama's not a real guy. He's like, uh, is it a real guy? No, did it's like Ed Hardy. Did you just make him up? <laughs> no, it's like there's a store called Tommy, Tommy Bahama. Bahama. Is there? I've, yeah. heard of, I've heard of Tommy Banana. Is that Tommy Banana, no, that's... <laughs> Tommy Banana's a that series of movies that I... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did get into porn. I did get into <laughs> porn. Yeah. I did. Do you enjoy pornography? Do you watch a lot of porn? <laughs> Uh, you know, it depends. It, it, it's, if it's on the British Airways menu, you know. Yeah, okay. yeah. If British Airways are showing it, then it must be all right. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is. You know. I find that with pornography, it's a bit like snooker or pool. You know, I don't mind doing it, but watching it's kind of boring after a while. <laughs> You'd rather do the pornography, you mean? Yeah, I'd rather, be, I'd rather be in it than, you know, yeah. sadly weeping in the hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... It's not too late for you. Yeah, no. no hey, uh, we have to take a break. Will you hang around? I'll hang around. All right. Well, we'll be right back with Colin. Ford. I love this. You're insane. Come on, old man. Uh, Colin, you're, you're very uh, English. 
How's that? <laughs> How's that going? It's, um, it, I, I find it difficult. Yes, yeah. I, um, I, I, when I, you know, it's uh, basically the default state of the Englishman is embarrassment. Scottish um, people too. Scottish people, yeah, embarrassment and rage. Yeah. We have rage too, you know, the yeah. people have rage. Um, no, but we've actually, we, we conducted the empire with an, a sense of embarrassment. Right. You know, we've, we've sort of apologised our way through India and, and sort of North <laughs> Africa. And, I know. don't know if that's quite how they remember it. <laughs> <laughs> It was a formal, they may not have, you know, we didn't apologise in the, in the native tongue. But, right, you know, yes. Nevertheless, it, it, all right, but, sorry everyone, you all get right. over there right now. No, no, yeah. no, we felt very uncomfortable about disemboweling people. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. um, hey, 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 it's a long time ago, <laughs> shut up. No, it's, um, it's, it, what, what's interesting is, you, you were talking about the Olympics just now. Right. I, I don't know, we have this way of, of winning things. All the events that the English won were sitting down. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Rowing, right. cycling, yeah. sailing, all right. they're all things that involve the, the art of sitting down. I, that's, <laughs> that's true. It is, isn't it? I actually am drawn to flying. I like to fly airplanes and, and I down. like to do that because it's sitting that's down. That's right, we yeah. don't like to stand up, do we? It's, well, it's tough on your legs after a while. It is. Listen, I mean, when I, when I, when I did this, the Tom Ford film... Yes. Uh, the, the, is there a lot of sitting down in the film? Uh, there is, and some standing up and some lying down. Well, I can't wait to see it. It's far too active for me. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the getting in shape challenge, because right. Ford sort of gently suggested that it would be okay if I decided to get in shape. Right. And um, the first thing I went to buy, it was funny, I went into the sports shop and all these weights looked far too heavy. Yep. Yeah. And I just, so I bought a mat. <laughs> 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 Quite an expensive one. I this is for what, exercise. This is good. I and need I, something comfortable to get in shape. Doing. I took it to my room. I lay down to do some sit-ups, and I woke up two hours later. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. No, it's perfectly acceptable to do sit-ups without the mat. You can just do them in the, If the room has a carpet, it can sometimes, you know, no, exfoliate your back at the same time. <laughs> No, but I'd miss my mat. Now I take it wherever I go. And really? You know, do you do snooze. the yoga? No, no, I sleep on it. Sleep on it. <laughs> well, what do you do then? You do sit-ups and it works. Lift I up wake up with perfect abs. It's quite a <laughs> really? It's just yeah, yeah. sleeping. That you should do a video. <laughs> I should. Yeah, the, the cold <laughs> birth sleep <laughs> your way to hell. <laughs> Yeah, and the Winter Olympics without snow as well. Yeah, we just a talking tricky. about it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I think I'd prefer it really because the snow makes you go too fast. <laughs> well, I think the idea is to you know pick up a bit of speed on the way down. That's uh, I don't like that. Well, <laughs> well, you could do it sitting down. What was then, the motto? You... Faster, faster, higher, stronger, uh, something like that. You know. You see, I think I would go for a little bit slower, n lower. Yes. And sort of in touch with my feminine side. <laughs> on the road, I would be... Now, you say that like you are in touch with your feminine side. Are you in touch with your feminine side? And, and what does that constitute, being in touch with one's feminine side? It, it constitutes a lot of effort going into trying to get in touch with my masculine side. Which is, <laughs> is lately, I mean, I've done an ABBA movie. You know, that does But that was great. That was a great movie. I love that movie. The, the Mamma Mia with the... And when Piers Brosnan says in that movie, I see you kept my bagpipes, I laughed for a week. <laughs> Great. And I know Piers and like him, and I love that line I that know. he had to say. But it's it. the nicest thing you could say to a woman. It is. I see you kept my back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just melt. They, they do. They love it. And, and you know a woman loves you if she keeps your spider-like musical instrument for a long time. <laughs> That's right. Do you ever play the bagpipes or any other musical instrument? Not so much these days. Right. Really. Yeah. That was more, a, more of a thing of my youth when I wanted to impress the girls. You know, what, what rock and roll. Some, you know. Really? What did you play? Pierce my and the bagpipes. Bagpipes? <laughs> no. No, I, I, I tried. Uh, I tried to play the guitar. Really? Yeah. The, the guitar was banned at my school. I mean, this is another thing about England. The school I went to would not allow the saxophone or the guitar because they were not serious instruments. It was a, a quite extraordinary thing. Really? So, so what? They, you mean, I arrived and they said, you get to play the baritone euphonium. <laughs> which is like the tuba, but less sexy. Yeah. <laughs> The baritone euphonium is not quite a tuba, right? It's a, it's a smaller and smaller not, tuba. not even as much, it's not even good for comedy, really. I mean, a tuba at least. <laughs> so tuba. this, I mean, no one ever got laid with a baritone. <laughs> I, mean, that's the... I don't know, though. I think uh, we could maybe ask that question of the viewers. <laughs> Anyone get laid with a baritone euphonium? <laughs> 
I don't know. Are you still living in England? Still living in London? I am. London's yeah. very nice. What part of London are you in? Uh, I live in Chiswick, West London. I like Chiswick. Do yeah, you? it's just uh, past Chelsea on the way to the airport. That's right. Yeah, very Depending nice. which way you're, yes. Yeah, well, if you're yeah. coming in from the airport, it's just <laughs> before <laughs> Chelsea. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, Thanks um, for pointing that out. <laughs> Um, a lot of time spent in Italy. My wife's Italian, so really? I, I have the very good fortune to have That's that. That's rather daring to yeah, have an Italian wife and be English, isn't it? <laughs> yes. That, I love that. It's, it's frightening. I mean, I, that is one thing, actually, I've, I have never got used to. What, her, your wife being Italian? The, her, the fact that she's Italian. Yeah, yeah it's, but does she, no. does she cook? Yeah, she, she does. Yeah. yeah, she Very cooks. well, probably, I'd imagine. Um, she cooks brilliantly. I, she certainly frightened it out of me. I used to cook very, very enthusiastically until I met her, and then well, I realized... beans on toast, another English fair, <laughs> I imagine. Deep-fried Mars bars. Deep-fried Mars bar, that's more Scotland no, I mean, than yes, yeah. no. Do you still have yourself the odd deep-fried uh, Mars bars? No, bar? I don't. I mean, I, I occasionally, occasionally will uh, foray into a little bit of haggis. You will, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's quite a dietary leap from Scotland to Los Angeles. Yes, isn't it, yes. Really? I actually went back home uh, about 18 months ago. I was in Scotland and I had, uh, I went to a restaurant, uh, a local uh, type, I'm not going to say, it was a cafe and they had fried food and uh, my body went into toxic shock. <laughs> It happens when you go home. I, I mean, I have to say, I do miss... I love solid, greasy, old-fashioned English. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, if you go too far... My, my, the school I grew up in, it was actually like child abuse, the food that they served. Really? I mean, I, they, they used to make seat eat every last bit of it, and I used to walk out with my pockets full of sausages and, and tinned peas, <laughs> which is disgusting. It it's, sounds kind of it's, great. It's though, better well, in your yeah. pocket than down, yeah. down your neck. Pockets full of sausages and tinned peas sounds a little bit porny as well, actually, yeah. <laughs> But it's better than, the, uh, what I don't like, what I cannot bear is this sort of the nouvelle, you know, the vertical food. You know, yes, there's tiny little, on a big plate yeah. and then a tiny little bit of food a, in the a middle. A sphincter yeah. of pigeon with a, yeah, yeah. Kind of a grape and a, uh, what it, drizzled, drizzled in... Uh, in sphincter of <laughs> pigeon? In the, uh, in yeah, you know how to live with your moisturising <laughs> and your pigeon sphincter. <laughs> Live you know, the dream, sir. I'll, I'll tell you how about look, English catering. I'll, I'll, I'll go soon, don't worry. Um, uh, you, you're going to have to in a minute. Yeah, yeah we're out of time. No, but English on. catering. Um, working with Tom Ford, one of the things that was easy is the catering in this country is absolutely fantastic on a film set. Oh, yes. You can eat healthy stuff and it still tastes good. This is how bad it is in England. It, this is a long time ago. It's got better. I just did a movie and finally the level's coming up now. Um, Timothy Spall, English actor. I know Tim, yeah. They had to make, he had a scene where he vomits. Yeah. And they It'd had be to very make... difficult to make Tim Spall vomit, <laughs> well, come on, I, be fair. I, I've seen things that could easily make Tim Spall vomit. Oh, right. and this... Pigeon sphincter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, um, no, he, he had to be covered in vomit, and the props department cooked up this stuff, this vomit for him. And I tell you, it was the best, that, compared to the catering, <laughs> <laughs> the entire cast and crew were queuing up with their bowls. Not a sub <laughs> vomit. A bowl of Timothy Spall's vomit. <laughs> you can actually get it's that in a lot of restaurants in L.A. now as well. I'll have the Spall vomit, please. <laughs> Colin, we're out of time. Uh, listen, good luck at the Academy Awards, and then who knows, maybe on to the Oscar after that. <laughs> <laughs> a very lovely call for us, everybody. <laughs>
And we also learned that my tattoo goes all the way around to my baby. 